Hey everybody, Derek here. I'm here to bring you another video for The Walking Dead Season 5. And tonight what I'm going to do is my review for the most recent episode that just premiered tonight, Slab Town. Uh, and I'm just going to be giving my thoughts, giving some things that I thought about, and just, you know, how great of an episode it was. I was actually very impressed with it. I think they did a great job of bringing Beth back into the story. The hospital definitely seems like a very interesting place. And I can't wait to see what the future has for them. But um, just in case you have not watched the episode yet, there will be spoilers. So if you have not watched the episode, do not watch this video because you will be spoiled. Okay. So, um, you know, we get reintroduced to Beth in this episode. Beth has been missing since alone. And it turns out that she was taken by um, the people that run the Grady Memorial Hospital. And um, from what I understand, it seems like it is a, uh, a hospital that's being run on orders that they received originally from the government. Because I was kind of wondering about that. And it seems like they kind of are operating on that premise. You know, they were talking about they were given orders to uh, take the hospital and, you know, help rebuild. And basically, that's what they're trying to do, it seems. Um, and, you know, Beth is taken there because she was, you know, getting chased by the walkers at the mortuary. And she was taken. Um, and she was able to uh, basically <clears throat> uh, get healed. Uh, she had a cut right here on her face, which, you know, it may have been from them hitting her. It may have been that she, you know, got, you know, ran into something. God only knows. But she had a cut here. So, um you know, and her wrist was also uh, in a cast. So whether they took her by force or, you know, whatever the case may be, I'm not sure. But, you know, she ends up there. And uh, basically it's a it's a very interesting uh, system. Definitely not um, a very ideal place to be um, because there's a lot of things that go on here. Basically, you know, the leader is a cop by the name of Dawn Lerner. And Dawn is basically seen as the leader of the group, um, even though a lot of people have mentioned, like, that they could, you know, take her out if they really wanted to, which I found very interesting. You know, if you are if you don't have a lot of confidence in your leader, then why are you letting her lead? But I think it was more of, like, you know, not having the pressure, plus, you know, the fact that she's letting people do what they want to do uh, and letting them get away with it also allows her to basically be you know, put in that position. Because from all intents and purposes, it really looks like Dawn believes that what she is doing is a great thing and doing something that's for the greater good. Because they are bringing people in and they are, you know, if they're injured, they do treat them and heal them. You know, Beth had some injuries and they took care of it. A couple of other people were brought in with injuries and they, they at least tried to, you know, heal them before, you know, they put them down, like they did in the episode early on when some guy wasn't responding, so they, you know, turned the machines off because they only have limited resources. So it seems like they're going about, you know, something that they at least feel like they're working towards a greater good type purpose of, you know, we're going to bring people in, we're going to keep this place running, we're going to increase the amount of survivors, and then when, and then they believe that the government is still out there just waiting to, you know, get control of everything, come back and say, hey, time to come out, we got this, and, you know, then they can rebuild the world. So it seems like they have a good intention, it's just the way they're going about it is not very, you know, ethical, it's not very moral, and quite frankly, it basically makes you a prisoner. That's pretty much what they've done with Beth, with Noah, with Joan, is, and with anybody else they bring in, is they bring them in, and they basically say, okay, you have to work for us now, so we're going to put you to work. And every time you eat food, that's just more, you know, work. It's like, it's like you know, committing crimes in prison and, you're like, every day that you do something wrong, they add another day to your sentence. It would, you know, it would be like if it was like that. It's basically here where every time they eat, every time they take medical supplies, any time they take any resource, it's just a longer amount of time that they have to stay there. And pretty much it's an indefinite thing. You can never really work off your debt. Uh, in my opinion. So, you know, basically, they're being forced to work, and in exchange for that, at least for maybe the women, um, unfortunately, like Joan and Beth, are expected to basically give the 
male officers sexual favors um reasoning being is that you know the officers feel like hey you know i'm going out there because they are like basically what it seems like is they are the ones that go out there and get food and get medical supplies and get everything and bring them back and basically you know they're doing patrols they're making sure that the area is safe they're making sure that the hospital stays safe and in exchange for that they want you know some <clears throat> some sexual favors uh, it seems which again is just totally wrong you know i mean it's just not very appropriate to be demanding that kind of thing from, you know, people that are in a situation like that. It's just wrong. You know, we know that. Um, but basically, Dawn lets it go because it's for the greater good. You know, and that's the thing is she, she kind of is like, well, you know, we're going to try to rebuild the world. We might have to do a couple of ugly things to do it. But once we get this over with, you know, it's back to, you know, <clears throat> back to normal maybe. But um, that's part of, you know, the bad things that are going on there. It's basically, you know, you can't leave. You are basically forced to, you know, work. And, you know, the women are, are basically told to, you know, give in to the officer's uh, sexual, you know, needs, which is, again, a completely, you know, that, that's what makes it a really bad place is just, you know, all the things that you're subjected to and demanded to do. Um, you know, and we saw that with Joan, the woman that uh, basically had the bite on her arm. And from what I what I believe happened was she tried to escape. And of course, there's a lot of walkers down there in the dark, you know, down in the basement. And, you know, she ends up getting bitten and, you know, maybe ran back and came back in. And, you know, she's telling Dawn, she's like, I'm not going back there. I'm not doing this. I don't want to be, you know, used like that. And Dawn says, no, I can protect you when she's just telling her a bald lie. You know, it's pretty much just she's just trying to, you know, tell her what she wants to hear. You know, Dawn is basically her belief is, you know, well, if this is what it takes to uh, help the world get back to the way it was and this is what it takes to keep the officers happy, then I'm going to do it. And I think that's why the officers just let, you know, her be in charge because, you know, it's another person that can help them out. And if she's not going to step in and do anything about it, then, well, who cares? Um, so, you know, definitely a lot of, you know, bad things that are going on here. And, you know, the, the other thing that I found interesting was, was they only bring in people that they can control. So that's another big factor. And you saw that, you know, Noah, um, who basically was like, you know, he does like the laundry and stuff. He, you know, he's another person that works there. And he talked about how, you know, I think they, I think he said that they sent his father away, something like that. But and you saw that just throughout, you know, when you saw Joan, you saw Noah, you saw Beth, you see that these are people that can basically, they're not as strong um, physically, or, you know, they don't really have any bargaining chips or any power. They're basically, you know, and that's the way that Dawn sees them. She's like, you know, she even explains it to Beth, like, out there, you're nothing, you're you're dead, you know, you're, you don't matter, but here you at least, you can have a place and we'll protect you. But in exchange for that, we just expect you to work and we expect you to, you know, do these things for us. And, you know, of course, they don't know who Beth is, you know. And that's the thing is they really do underestimate some of these people in some respects. But on the other hand, you also see just how much control they do have over uh, some of the people here. You know, I mean, she – Dawn repeatedly – beats people in this episode and you saw that with um you know they brought in another doctor uh gavin i believe his name was the guy that fell off the you know from a first floor building or something you know where she wanted the doctor dr edwards to break the rules you know normally it's hey you, if, if somebody can't be saved then you you know that's it boom but if they can be saved then you know deal with them well this guy had a lot of you know, injuries like internal bleeding, but she wants him to do everything that uh, he can to save this guy, and that's because he's a doctor, um, you know, and doctors are very valuable in the Walking Dead world. I mean, let's, let's face it, you know, if you are a doctor, you have a very big bargaining chip, a very big, you know, part in this world, because you're going to be the one that's going to, you know, help me if, you know, if I have to get my arm amputated, you're going to be the one that's going to know how to do it, and you're going to be able to, you know, stop the bleeding and keep the infection. So Dr. Edwards is in a very big, important position in this group, and you see that throughout the episode where, you know, he's like, you know, speaking out for, you know, Beth, and he's speaking out for, um, 
Joan, you know, because he knows that he, he kind of has a little bit of a bargaining chip. But you also see, you know, whenever um, he, she brought back Gavin, where he kind of got a little nervous, and I'll get to that part at the end. But, you know, you definitely can see that certain people are in very precarious positions where it's like if you're not needed as much, your position in the group can change. You know, it's kind of like any, you know, regular hierarchy, you know, if you have something like that. It's like it's like introducing another, you know, predator into the food chain, you know. It's like when you introduce lions into the United States or if you introduce the bear into Africa, you know, you might change things up. I guess that's kind of the analogy I'm using. And bringing in another doctor is going to knock Stephen Edwards down a peg because he's not the only doctor. They don't have to, you know, cater to him. It was kind of like, you know, when Don got upset when, you know, Dr. Edwards was like saying, I can't save this guy, uh, he, she decked Beth. Reason being is because you saw that Dr. Edwards cares about Beth. She can't smack the doctor because if she knocks him out, then, you know, how are they going to save this guy or, you know, how, what's the motivation? But by smacking Beth, it's saying, hey, you better, uh, you know, treat uh, this guy or I'm going to hurt her. And he doesn't want to see that happen to people. So you see that it's kind of like, a, you know, who's got more power over who? And that's really what this is, is, you know, in a sense, it's kind of a power struggle to, you know, either stay on top, stay alive, stay in a, you know, an ideal position. And <clears throat> people like Beth and Joan and Noah just are not in a position where they can really do much. Because, you know, they, they're going to get beaten, they're going to be, you know, told what to do or else they're going to get beaten. And maybe if you, you know, don't cooperate enough, you could be killed if somebody else comes in to take your place. We haven't seen that yet, but um, you saw with Joan, you know, she couldn't take it. You know, she couldn't stand being a part of this system, being made a sexual slave. And she actually, you know, when she died, I think she cut her um, sutures open so that she would bleed out. I believe that's what happened. Um, so you see just how terrible of a place this is. <clears throat> so you saw that um, Beth and Noah hatch an escape plan. And basically, uh, you know, they go down the elevator shaft and Noah injures himself along the way. And Beth just goes right into uh, beast mode. You know, and Beth was definitely very, very great in this uh, episode. Emily Kinney did such an ex excellent job. And you see kind of like, you know, Beth being out there longer than other people. And that's the thing is, as you're bringing more and more people in, depending on, you know, who they are, you know, you see that they're going to have different attitudes and they're going to have more exposure. And, you know, Beth in throughout this whole entire episode was just, you know, trying to, you know, explain like, you know, no, I... I, I want to get back out there because this it's more ideal for me to be out there. She wants to find her people. She wants to find Daryl. She wants to find them and get back together with them because she feels more needed and more important there. And, you know, you see that whole attitude throughout the episode where she's like, no, I'm not staying. I'm not staying. And just being subjected to all of this, you know, what's going on. She's a smart cookie. She realizes what's going on and she's not going to want to stay there. And I think it was very great that she, you know, hatched the plot, uh, excuse me, hatched the plot with Noah to escape. So basically they, they go down and the elevator shaft, Noah ends up getting away and Beth ends up getting caught because she stayed behind to basically, you know, kill some of the walkers and make sure that Noah got away. And I love that smile on her face, you know, when she saw that Noah got away because she knows that Noah's going to want to, you know, come back to her. You know, I think she, she kind of realizes that, you know, that she is, you know, going to be uh, rescued at some point. I think she really believes that now. But you saw, you know, like she keeps trying to, you know, upset the balance a little bit and trying to, you know, make people realize what's going on. And just nobody nobody's listening because, again, she's not really in a position where she can, you know, make too much of a difference in the way things work. Um, except, you know, I did love, you know, that part when that officer Gorman, who was trying to force his way onto Beth, got his neck ripped out by w Walker Joan. I thought that was absolutely great. Thank goodness. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, Beth was recaptured and again, hit, uh, basically again, I think it's more just like, you know, Hey, if you do something wrong, we're going to beat you because we want you to feel that you're submissive to us. We want you to feel like you are insignificant and don't matter. You know, and, and it, the only thing that you matter is that you do your part and we will feed you. 
you know, you're, you're basically the lower end of the spectrum here compared to us. You know, we're the top dogs and you're not. So you see that being reinforced. What's kind of uh, ironic, a comic book reference, is where Beth's scars are at. They're not exactly the same as Andrea's, but Andrea had one kind of here, uh, basically whenever she got stabbed, and then she got shot up here. So Beth's getting some scars, you know, she's getting really tough, and, um, you know, I think it's very interesting to see that, um, you know, the way that that's working out for her. Um, and then, of course, the one of the last things that happened is, is Beth realizes that she, um, you know, she earlier in the episode, she killed accidentally the, the doctor, Gavin, that they brought in because the Dr. Edwards told her to give him uh, clozapine, something like that. And it killed him. And, uh, you know, Beth, you know, basically uh, didn't realize what she was doing. She later realizes that the doctor intended for her to kill that other guy. Reason being, again, is because if the doctor is not the only doctor, then he's no longer top dog in a sense. You know, he his position gets, you know, lowered in the group. And he could, you know, it, what would be so, you know important about him not a lot you know if there's another doctor that's cap just as capable or more capable than him then he he's go he's gone you know if he decides he wants to mess with what the officers are doing then they might kill him you know it, that might be the case so i found that very you know interesting you know again it's like a big power struggle in this group you know making sure that you stay in a you know a position that you can work with or maybe even make yourself an advantage over and the doctor knows that he has an advantage over everybody <clears throat> he's in a, in essence the most important person there and he wants to remain that way he's selfish in that respect but you can also respect his you know thought behind that is that once there's another doctor there he's no longer top dog he's no longer valuable and <clears throat> if he if he wants to you know speak out against what the officers are doing then they're either going to beat him into submission because he's he's older, you know, he's not necessarily in the most physical uh, condition, or they're just going to kill him and let the other doctor, you know, run the show if he lived. So I think that's, you know, and I think that was part of Dawn's thinking was, you know, save this guy, you know, do what you can to save this guy because then I have an advantage over you, you know, and it's always about Dawn, you know, having control and being able to <clears throat> make the hospital run as best as it can. So definitely a lot going on there. I don't know how much more we're going to see of it, though. Um, you know, next week appears to be just focused on Abraham's group. But they left, the, they left us off with a very insane cliffhanger. Uh, you know, Carol gets wheeled in there. Uh, so how did that happen? <laughs> well, I guess we're going to have to wait a few weeks to find out. Because, again, I think, I think it's just going to be focused on Abraham's group next week. So we're not going to find out right away. But I think it was a great episode. I think they did a great job um, reintroducing Beth. It was so great to see her, so great to see her, you know, tougher than she ever was. And I, I just think that there's a lot of great things that they can do with Beth's character now. I'm just very interested to see how the rest of the season is going to play out. I can't believe we're already halfway through the fall. So insane. Um, it really is. But I just want to thank you guys uh, for watching, and I, I, tonight I want to give you all a special thank you. Um, this is my 100th video uh, for my channel, and I just want to, you know, again, express my deepest thanks to everyone that's been watching, everyone that's been commenting. I really do appreciate it. You guys definitely, um, you know, it makes me happy to know that I'm able to get Walking Dead material out there that you guys watch, that you guys are interested in it. I really do appreciate it. Um, I have... Um, so much thanks for all my subscribers. I really, really appreciate it. I'm going to continue to make videos. Um, I, you know, tell your friends. I got think more things coming out. And I, again, I just want to thank you. Um, you know, none of this would be possible without you. And it really means a lot to know that, you know, that I'm getting information out there on Walking Dead that, you know, is relevant, does matter. And I really am appreciative of all of you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful evening, and I can't wait for next week. Thanks again, guys.